I welcome you all with my love and respects. You have all come here with some expectation, some hope to enhance your knowledge, to get a new perspective of life, to see if you can live your life in a better way. I want to tell you a few things before we get into the subject so that you can get the maximum benefit from your stay here. You might have gone to many other places, listened to many other lectures, practiced many other techniques before coming here. All that is all right. Just one thing. When you are here, just be totally here. That's all. Just leave behind all the knowledge that you have gathered earlier in other places and then come in here. You would have seen a board outside that said, leave your shoes and mind outside. You might have wondered what it meant. It means when you leave your shoes outside, just decide and leave your mind also. Just leave all your gathered knowledge next to your shoes and come in. You can take it back when you go out. Don't worry about that. No one will take your mind away. It will be perfectly safe. At least your shoes people might take. But your mind people will not touch. I will guarantee you that. People are unable to handle their own minds. They will surely not touch an experiment with yours. When you come in with an empty mind, with no prejudice, you can absorb what I am saying in its totality. If you come in with your knowledge, you will be constantly comparing every word of mine with what you know about it, with what you have heard about it from someone else earlier, and you will simply miss what I am trying to tell. You can absorb me only if there is some space in you to take me in. If you are already full, you cannot take me in. A small story. A learned professor from the West went to meet a Zen master in the East in Japan. The professor was very learned and had done a lot of research in many areas of study. He went to meet the master to acquire some spiritual knowledge, to discuss various issues with him, to understand spirituality in a better fashion. He arrived at the master's place and found the master brewing tea. The master saw him in and gestured for him to sit and continued to brew the tea. The professor sat down and after a while started talking of his background of all his studies, his discoveries, his travels all over the world, his experiences with different people, his conclusions on various subjects and what not. The master finished brewing the tea and placed two cups between them. He began pouring tea into the professor's cup. He poured and poured and slowly the cup started overflowing. The tea spilt over the saucer and flowed onto the table. The professor was agitated at what was happening. He could not contain himself any more. He screamed, Master, what are you doing? Stop pouring, the cup is overflowing. The master stopped and calmly said, So are you. The professor was shocked but understood what the master was trying to tell him. The professor was so full like the teacup that could not hold any more tea. Anything that the master might have told him would have only overflowed outside, not into him. The professor understood from that one word of the master what he meant, what he was trying to tell him. So understand if you want to experience me, if you really want to gain something for having taken the time out for these days, just be 
like an empty cup here be totally open and receptive be like a child innocent and curious like a sponge ready to absorb that is enough you see there are three types of knowledge the first is intellectual knowledge the knowledge of the mind for this you need only your mind nothing else if you are attentive and have a good memory it is enough if you can apply logic well if you have a little common sense to connect things and understand it is enough this is the kind of knowledge that you gain in school with your books to learn mathematics and science your mind is enough you can become a great mathematician or a great scientist the second type of knowledge is knowledge of the heart here you need to use your heart also in addition to your mind art music poetry dance all these come under this category for all these you cannot use only your mind nothing will happen if you use only your mind you have to use your heart also to paint to write poems to sing you need to emote all these are creations they are creations from your heart they are expressions of your heart can you write a poem with no feelings at all can an artist draw and paint with just his mind no they need to connect with their heart and then they will simply flow you can pick up certain points certain techniques about writing poems with your mind or about painting but ultimately the stuff will come from your heart only no one can teach you to write poems or paint they can teach you certain techniques that's all you have to then absorb things and start doing on your own the third type of knowledge is spiritual knowledge knowledge that is neither of the mind nor of the heart but of your being actually we can't even call it knowledge it is just a deep understanding beyond logic this can neither be taught nor picked up it can simply happen out of a deep communion at the being level i always tell people i cannot teach you spirituality but you can learn you can learn by just absorbing the master's words at the being level like energy the energy behind the master's words is so powerful that if you allow it it can penetrate you and touch you at the being level it can bring about a transformation that cannot happen with just words of the mind and feelings of the heart when i talk i talk from my experience of the ultimate truth from my being when you listen listen totally from your being only then can you get a glimpse of my experience i am not here to give you just words i am here to take you beyond words if you are here with acute awareness and silence you can go beyond words and get a glimpse of your own being all right let us alter the seating arrangement a little when you sit don't sit with your relatives or friends or people known to you sit at random next to anyone whom you don't know much whom you are not very familiar with when you sit with familiar people you will be compelled to exchange glances exchange words while i am talking if you sit with strangers you can absorb me better alone and understand one thing i always tell this during my talks when the session is happening there will be a beautiful flow an energy that is created and vibrating in the room a deep communion between you and me don't interrupt it by coming in late the flow will be broken it is just like 
encountering a speed breaker when you are going smoothly on the highway. The speed breaker is only a small interruption, but to cross it, you have to slow down, go over it and pick up speed again. The smooth flow will be broken. And please switch off your mobile phones. They are another very common speed breaker today. In fact, they can cause the journey to be totally bumpy, one speed breaker after another. I am sure each of you has a cell phone here. When you are here, don't be serious and heavy. Be sincere in listening and listen with an openness and lightness. Don't come here expecting that in the very first session you will experience God. In a light and easy mood, without expectations, you will be able to receive much more from me. If you come with a prejudiced mind, full of expectations, you will be thinking only of your expectations. You are not here to focus on your expectations. You are here to focus simply on what I say. The next thing, leave all your social ego outside and try to be an ordinary person while you are here. The ashram and the presence of the master is the best laboratory for you to experiment with yourself, to let go of your ego, to shed your illusions and understand that you are just a part of existence and experience your being. So even if you are somebody in society, try to be ordinary here and mix with everyone from your heart. Not only my words, but every moment of interaction, every moment of just being here can cause a transformation in you. You just need to be aware, that's all. A small story. There was a great Zen Buddhist monk, an enlightened master. One day, the governor of Japan came to visit him. The governor sent in his visiting card to the master. It had the words, Zaksan, governor of Japan. The master took one look at the card and said, I have no business with this idiot. Ask him to leave this very minute. Zen masters can be very harsh when they want to break somebody's mind or somebody's ego. They will never hesitate to use harsh words. The energy behind their words can simply pierce and transform a person. The disciple came back to the governor, gave back his card and repeated what the master had told him. The governor saw the card and understood. He was an intelligent man, not just intellectual but intelligent also. When the card and message were returned to him, he quietly struck out the words governor of Japan and gave back the card to be shown to the master. The master took one look and said, show him in. All our titles, our designations are all mere labels pasted on us by society. And we go about thinking that we are these labels. We by and by forget that we are not the labels but the stuff inside. We feel great about the labels, but you can never approach a master with these labels. You can never know existence with your labels. What the governor did cannot be called wrong. It might have been the right way to approach society, to be in accordance with the social protocols, but not the right way to approach a master. So when you come in, leave your governorship outside. Otherwise, you will miss a lot. Here, something transpires between the master and the seeker. We are going to share something of the inner world. Labels of the outer world will stand in the way when this is happening. Forgetting your personality is spirituality because personality is societal. We are here to find our individuality our inherent nature, our aloneness 
that we enjoyed in our mother's womb our connection with existence the only connection we need to find and celebrate all right now i want you all to go around and introduce yourselves to one another we will be creating a group energy when we are here together for these few days go around and introduce yourselves to each and every one in the group even if they happen to be your family introduce yourself remember each one is a different person every minute don't think that you know your family well you can't know them because they are changing every minute so now just go around and introduce yourselves all right now that you have finished you must be feeling more comfortable more at ease you will not worry about sitting with strangers anymore we will be discussing a lot of things in the next few days just listen to everyone and allow a space in you to open up wherein you can imbibe what you hear remember i don't want you to preach what i am saying i want you to practice it and the best time to start practicing is now so don't search for a good time to start it is now here or nowhere when you listen to whatever i say there are two ways in which your mind will work one is with doubt and the other with belief doubt is the way of the intellectual mind with doubt too much logic and reason will come in the way of receiving me into yourself when this happens you will miss me completely with belief also if you straight away believe in me you will miss understand you don't need to believe in anybody leave alone in me the so called believers are the weakest people because it takes great courage to live without beliefs when you don't have a belief you don't have a fall back system to support your actions you don't have a ready made idea to tell you what to think and how to act to be without a belief requires great courage because then you have to depend on your own intelligence for everything and this makes you feel unsure and insecure both doubt and faith are two sides of the same coin that is your mind at a very deep level your greatest doubt will carry some faith and your greatest faith will have some doubt in it i can assure you that then what should you do how to listen just listen with trust that's all trust is the energy the ability to translate teachings into practical life when i tell you the sun rises in the east you neither need to believe nor doubt you simply know that's all am i right or if it is something you haven't noticed you can always get up the next morning and see for yourself as an experiment yes this is the attitude i want from you i want you to take in everything with an open mind and experience what i am saying every moment in the various situations you might encounter during the day so have trust not faith take what i say as a hypothesis integrate it into your life and see for yourself whether it works or not to know that an apple is tasty you don't have to believe or doubt just take a bite and you will know time and again ancient rishis and masters have said that man's true nature is bliss over the years so many masters have happened on planet earth whether it was buddha or christ or krishna or mahavira the core of their message was the same they all said that man's true nature was bliss 
and they all gave methods or techniques to reconnect with that core with that bliss their expressions might have been different but their message was the same of course again and again people miss the master's message because they cling on to the master's personalities instead of their message this is the root cause for fanaticism religious wars and all the other things that are happening on planet earth anyhow all these masters had the same message that man's core is bliss and all of man's efforts are actually in seeking this inner space the space of bliss within him but over time due to social conditioning and distractions man forgets his purpose and starts seeking this bliss in outer world things in material things in names in forms in labels given to him by society in relationships in careers and what not a small story an old man went with his family to watch a movie in a theater the movie had just started when the man suddenly started groping about in the darkness on the floor his granddaughter who was sitting next to him got annoyed and asked him what he was doing on the floor he said dear i have lost my chewing gum it has fallen out the child got irritated and said grandpa it's all right leave it we will buy some more chewing gum now watch the movie the old man said i want only that chewing gum the child said grandpa don't behave like a baby we will get more chewing gum the old man said but dear my teeth are in it you see what we are really seeking is something but we are seeking it in the name of something else and at the end of it we find that even after achieving all the outer world things that we seek there is a certain void in us there is a certain yearning in us this yearning is because we are all actually searching for bliss but we search for it in the name of other things that is why we never feel fulfilled this yearning is the call of the being we ignore our being completely because we are so immersed in the outer world we need to be centered in our being and perform the outer world things as just a role in a drama instead we are so deeply involved in the outer world things and we are completely off center inside unless we are centered we will not experience a totality we will not experience fulfillment in our outer world achievements we might be filled but not fulfilled and because we are not fulfilled there remains a yearning inside we keep thinking that we are missing something and we start searching again in the outer world when you are centered inside with awareness you will have fulfillment every minute whatever you may be doing in the outer world because the fulfillment does not come from what you are doing outside it comes from inside so we need to look deep into what the masters have been saying time and again all the so called seekers have missed the masters life after life they simply went on seeking without stopping to get a glimpse of the truth and energy behind the master's words they are eternally on a journey traveling inside this concept of traveling is like trying to pick up a book but not picking it up can there be anything such as trying to pick up a book you either pick it up or not how can you try to pick it up when you say that you are trying to pick it up you are cheating yourself you can't cheat others because they know how foolish it is it is something like this people who don't have the capacity to make money claim that they are very honest 
and therefore unable to make money actually they don't have the capacity that is the truth but they justify it with reasons when we are unable to take a real leap into spirituality and at the same time we are not ready to confess that we don't know anything about it in order to keep our ego alive we create our own philosophies and go around saying short of enlightenment i know everything about spirituality i tell you mere clarity on the fact that we are spiritually poor is enough to allow the transformation the alchemy to start happening in us honesty and truth will lead to it automatically but we don't want that we use the seeker's ego as a buffer between the truth and us like how the car has shock absorbers to keep us from getting hurt on the road the seeker ego keeps us away from reality it serves as the buffer between the truth and us in the comfort of this buffer we happily conclude that we were all seekers all our lives whatever i may be telling you these few days just listen with complete awareness and try to catch the central chord the composite thread that runs in the whole thing if you do that you will create a space in you for the transformation to happen otherwise you will be simply collecting words and seeking all the time unless a transformation happens in you all words are useless and transformation is possible only if you look with deep awareness and be very clear even if you are 1000 people in this hall i am talking to you when i say you i mean you i have a thread running with each of you so don't ever apply what i am saying to others you will simply miss the whole thing we have a general tendency when we hear anything about our health being discussed we will immediately apply it to ourselves and see where we stand we will see whether we have any symptoms of what is being discussed if i talk about the skin you will feel your skin and see if i talk about the heart then you will feel your heart beat and see but when we hear anything about spirituality somehow we always apply it to others our family our friends our neighbors never to ourselves the problem is whatever i say you think ah i know myself well this message is for my husband swami ji is saying this so that my husband can change his ways i hope he has got the message from swami ji when i talk about worries you will immediately think of how much your mother worries you forget how much you worry i am telling you because you also worry probably your mother worries more than you but that is not the point understand that every word is for you it will come like an arrow bringing with it the energy don't dodge it just allow it to go in and transform you so don't keep looking at other people to see if they are showing signs of understanding if you do this you will miss it for yourself if you really know about yourself you will not have any worries or discontentment or pain or fear or lust or jealousy or ego but you have all of this in you that itself shows that you don't know everything about yourself first of all know that you don't know then at least you know that you don't know if you don't even know that you don't know then you don't even know that you don't know yes but swami ji we are traveling towards knowing ourselves so at this point we may know partly let me tell you one thing in a deep spiritual experience there will be no traveling it is a moment's experience 
that's all all our so called knowing is only creating a space inside us towards fully knowing but ultimately in the deeper sense either we know or we don't know but when we know more and more we become clear that we don't know that is enough that will motivate us to really knowing in the first chapter of the bhagavad gita arjuna vishada yoga which is the yoga of arjuna's grief arjuna talks throughout and krishna remains silent it is only when arjuna finally surrenders saying i know nothing that he is at last ready to receive krishna's message although krishna and arjuna were friends and childhood playmates though there might have been hundreds of other more relaxed situations the bhagavad gita was not delivered to arjuna any time earlier why because until then arjuna was not ripe to receive the gita it is only when he utters the words i don't know that he becomes qualified to know the basic condition for spiritual progress is to know very clearly that you don't know this is the first step towards really knowing yes any questions let me tell you please feel free to ask questions this is not going to be a sermon from my side so please be interactive and ask questions or rather express your confusion and i will try to bring in clarity one more thing when you ask questions i can be assured that you have not gone to sleep a small story a bus driver and a great preacher died and reached lord yamadharma's court the court of the lord of death first the bus driver was questioned about all his deeds in his lifetime his records were verified then he was given a golden key and a staff and sent to a luxury room the preacher was waiting for his turn and watching all this he thought to himself if the bus driver himself was given a golden key and other luxurious things then surely i will get something much more than that after all he had preached about god all his life his turn came and his records were presented the verdict was pronounced he was sent to hell he became very angry he could not believe the verdict he demanded to know the reason lord yama explained we don't bother about what you have done in your lifetime we only see the results of your actions when the bus driver was driving his driving was such that the people in his bus were continuously thinking of god whereas when you were preaching although you spoke about god the people who were with you were sleeping most of the time so please be present and alert here if not for your sake for my sake so that i may be received properly at the court of lord yama ask questions and make things clear for yourself and for others only if you ask questions things can be worked out in a more practical way in a way more adaptable to your life some of you may think that you may look like a fool if you ask some of your questions i tell you if you ask questions you will only look like a fool if you don't ask questions you will remain a fool so if there's any concept that you don't agree with please raise your hand and clarify yes swami ji we are looking to destroy all our negativities and be reborn as a new person in the next few days understand there can be no destruction on planet earth there is always only transformation all your so called negative emotions can be transformed into positive emotions like pure love and awareness society always teaches you to divide and destroy yourself it never teaches you to become integrated it places a wedge inside you between you 
and you so that it can take control of you it always talks to you in the language of lower and higher that is why you suffer so much it makes you think that you are inferior it makes you fight with yourself society can rule you only if you feel chaotic inside yourself it first makes you feel that you are no good and then comes up with remedies for it that is why you start talking in this kind of language a small story a man was suffering from a common cold he visited the doctor and asked for medicine it was just an ordinary cold and the doctor looked at him for a while and said why don't you do something just go out for some time in the night and get the chill wind to touch you for a while then come back the patient was shocked he said but doctor i will catch pneumonia if i do that the doctor said yes i can cure pneumonia in no time society makes you become something and then teaches you ways to come out of it now i tell you there is no higher or lower there is only transformation when you learn to look in with awareness automatically you will be transformed this is always the master's approach he teaches you to look in he never divides you he always integrates you he never tells you that you are negative there is no negative what you call as negative and positive are just the two extremes of the same spectrum negative is not any physical entity for you to throw out if you transform you move in the spectrum towards higher positive energies that's all as i said earlier this transformation is possible if you are just open and receptive to what is happening here yes swami ji we have read in many books that our mind is nothing but maya or illusion and that all our questions are only an illusion please can you tell us something about this the famous question about maya asked one more time see the first thing don't confuse yourself with complicated reading second thing understand very clearly there is nothing to be understood with the mind the mystery of life cannot be solved with your mind you cannot know the purpose of your life with your mind that is why they say that your mind is an illusion and the first step to solving the mystery of our life is dropping your mind if you allow your mind to play you will continue to play that's all life after life you will play your deep inner thirst will remain unquenched probably your seeker ego will get fulfilled but that is of no use you become only more confused deep inside you try to move your center of operation from your mind to your heart or being if you operate with your mind as the center questions and more questions will follow with questions you cannot know only with awareness you can know if you operate with your heart awareness and understanding will happen in you and then automatically your questions will start dissolving like how when the sun rises the darkness simply disappears when awareness happens in you understanding will happen and your questions will dissolve you will start understanding things even before you come to the question and like that the questions will dissolve it is difficult to understand this but once you get an experience of it you will know exactly what i mean by awareness questions will disappear and understanding will continuously engulf you if you understand this much 
you need not worry about maya or illusion in addition to intellectual understanding from my words meditation can help you switch to this mode of awareness easily we can talk for hours together about maya and illusion but you will only get more confused instead it is worthwhile learning the solutions that will help us to live intelligently that is enough one thing i want to tell you maya or illusion is everything that your mind projects so that is why i say simply drop your mind that's all all right i want all of you to be present here in totality most of you will be here physically but mentally elsewhere all that i'm saying are great truths and i want you to listen to them so that you may get a good intellectual understanding from it of course the experiential understanding will also happen but at a different level you see as i said earlier bliss is continuously happening in us this is the basic truth but we continuously stop the flow of bliss and this is what we experience as misery in our lives bliss is not something that you need to get from outside and keep inside yourself no it is your inherent nature when you arrive in this world you are in a state of bliss as society conditions you you become an expert at moving as far away as you can from this bliss and then start searching for ways outside of yourself to attain it these few days we are going to see how to stop the stopping of this bliss that is continuously happening inside us when i say bliss i don't mean the ordinary happiness that we feel in our everyday lives the ordinary happiness that happens in our lives is a result of something that happens outside some happy occasion some material benefit some happy news some relationship that worked out or something to do with a person or thing in the outside world this kind of happiness is purely dependent on the people and circumstances outside of us and this kind of happiness leads us to sadness also because people and circumstances keep changing they are not the same their behavior is different at different times and when their behavior changes our happiness too is affected the bliss that we are talking about is different it is purely a state inside yourself which is in no way affected by outer world incidents it is your core your permanent state and when you have found this you will be a mere witness to the outer world you will become a blissful watcher you will participate in it fully but without losing your bliss a small story there was an old man in a family who could not be pleased at any cost he remained stubborn and grumpy no matter how much his family tried to keep him in good spirits his children and grandchildren would all come and visit him and try to cheer him up but he would remain the same way suddenly one day overnight he became very gentle and cheerful his family was shocked at the sudden transformation one of his granddaughters was courageous enough and asked him grandpa how come you have changed so suddenly the old man replied all my life i tried my best to get a contented mind but never succeeded in getting it so i have decided to be contented with it now everything is a projection of our mind with the help of our mind we have stopped the flow of bliss from within we can never get bliss from outside it is already there inside us we just have to look in that's all understand there is a universal consciousness that fills the entire cosmos 
and there is an individual consciousness that fills us man's whole purpose is to try to establish a connection between these two when this connection happens man is said to be enlightened or in eternal bliss or in nityananda nityananda means eternal bliss through listening to all the lectures and practicing all the meditation techniques we can become more and more aware of this connection and try to experience it with more awareness this is the sole purpose of all our efforts i always say there are two types of people one who fight with others and win and the other who fight with themselves and win it is easy to fight with others it is not a big deal but it is difficult to fight with yourself when you are courageous you will fight with yourself and win you will destroy what you are not and emerge as a blissful being you will flower the greatest challenge for man is to realize his entire potentiality this can be done only when he moves inwards and keeps purifying himself again and again until he becomes intelligent enough not to gather more dust inside actually the word swami means one who has realized his full potential all our difficulty on planet earth is because we are not able to realize our potentiality there is a saying that goes the lion that is not allowed to be a lion will become a fox if we are not allowed to realize our true potential energy we will start expressing it in the wrong way either self destructive or destroying others so the creative energy or the potential energy should be allowed to express itself in a freely flowing way society should allow us that is one thing and we should also know the technique to express it swami means a man who has realized his potential power who is expressing himself as he is who is completely in tune with his being who is blissful you have tremendous potential in you time and again psychologists and mystics have said that man is not living up to his full potential where are we missing it where are we stuck why are we not able to realize our full potentiality we need the courage to let go and explore that's all we will then know the answers to all these questions when you start exploring sincerely you will experience a shift in consciousness and this shift will open a space in you for you to flower when you flower you become a king you will then live like a lord on earth people may have all the possible comforts money knowledge and what not but they will remain beggars if they have not found their inner space to find your being is to become rich inner richness is the real richness we have become so caught up with what goes on outside us that we remain completely ignorant of our inner selves we are so caught up in the outer world adventure that we miss the wonderful adventures of the inner world we miss what the great rishis and masters experienced in their lives this experience is what i want to share with all of you yes you want to ask anything swami ji how do you define spirituality in a nutshell spirituality is nothing but the flowering of four things in you physical health mental health smooth interpersonal relationships and the ability to respond spontaneously what i call responsibility physical health is being free from disease when you visit a doctor he should give you a report saying that you are clinically all right the second 
mental health is being free from all subconscious and deeply engraved negative thought patterns and being free from worries pain jealousy discontentment ego lust etc the third interpersonal relationships is having a smooth relationship with everyone around you it is not enough if you are merely cordial with everyone you should be able to go through any amount of interaction with any kind of person without feeling pressure or pain the moment you feel pressure or pain it means that there is some block inside you some block in your mental health the fourth the ability to respond spontaneously is what i call responsibility when you are able to take on responsibility when you are able to say yes to anything spontaneously you will expand that very moment of saying yes and energy will flow through you to accomplish it of course it is up to you to use that energy to accomplish that task when you keep doing this you keep expanding so if these four things flower in you then you are spiritual then it does not matter which profession you are in or whether you are married or unmarried or whether you are young or old or anything for that matter yes swami ji what would you say about eating vegetarian food and eating non vegetarian food first don't go around telling others not to eat non vegetarian food in departments unknown it is better not to involve yourself and get into trouble you see certain issues cannot be resolved by logical reasoning if we tell people not to eat non veg food they will ask you that like animals plants also have life and why are we eating plants what will you tell them there is no end to the subject this much i can tell you i am a pure vegetarian i eat vegetarian food because it is conducive to my body that's all there have been many enlightened masters who ate non veg food of course when enlightened masters do certain things we cannot pass judgment on them because their actions cannot be interpreted by our common dictionary we will be misconstruing and missing the whole thing just one thing don't categorize people based on their eating habits and don't force people to give up eating non vegetarian food a small story at the time the television was introduced in india a new television was brought in a certain house of mendicants all except one of them used to watch the programs on the television this man who never watched the television used to go to the president of the house and complain about how the others were watching television for hours together after a few times of complaining the president told him you too watch television from tomorrow the man was shocked and asked why he said that the president replied you are not happy abstaining from watching and hence you are grumbling about them doing it you have the desire to watch but you don't watch it because you want to feel solid inside yourself but this suppression is causing you to complain against them you see if you are not completely happy abstaining from eating non veg food you will compel others to become vegetarians when you are doing something totally you will never force another person to do it only when you are doing it with a doubt or half heartedly you will pull other people also into it when you are total you are enough unto yourself with no regrets and so you will not trouble anyone else you will allow them to have their freedom in fact i would go on to say that those who eat non veg food for one hour a day and forget about it are better off than those who eat vegetarian food and think about non veg 24 hours a day here is a small story a zen master 
was walking with his disciple towards his city on the way there was a river that was flowing there was a beautiful woman standing near it when she saw them she requested the master to help her cross the river the master promptly carried her to the other side of the river left her there and returned the disciple was totally disturbed by what he saw he was burning inside with what he saw as they walked along towards the city he couldn't resist asking master how can you as a master touch and carry a young girl the master replied i left her there long back why are you still carrying her masters always answer the questioner who's asking the question never the question itself in this story the master could have as well explained his supreme state as a master to the disciple and made him understand that it doesn't matter to him whether it is a male or female who he carried but he did not do that he made the disciple understand that the block was in the disciple's mind not the master's act if you feel you cannot give up non-veg food without craving for it eat until it drops on its own mind you this does not mean that i am advocating non-vegetarian food for my own life body and mind vegetarian food is conducive and so i eat it if you wish to adopt my way of life become vegetarian that's all but don't give it up and crave for it and torture other people also to give it up we all take up small issues like vegetarianism and contemplate on it for hours together that is the problem there are three categories under which you can fall first would be not to eat non vegetarian food and not to think about it the second category would be to eat it and forget about it the third category would be not to eat it yourself but feel deprived and hence torture people around you not to eat it as well please don't fall in the third category that's all yes swami ji when i want to do good for example when traveling in a bus i see an old man and i want to offer my seat to him but i decide against it when i think that i have to stand for the rest of the journey whereas when i want to smoke a cigarette i get a total concurrence from inside me to go ahead saying that one cigarette will not ruin my life why am i not able to control myself and do what is really correct you see when you take in something with your mind something that has been told to you from outside you don't see its benefits clearly and deeply although you understand it at the intellectual level but when you experience something deeply yourself it becomes your own understanding and so you stand by it without any problem the cigarette has merged with your being you have experienced it yourself it is not through someone else's preaching it is your own experience so your heart accepts it but the happiness that you get by offering your seat to someone in the bus is something that you have not experienced deeply you have been told by people that it is good to offer your seat to an elderly person in the bus that's all at the most you will feel a certain satisfaction at having followed social etiquette that's all in the case of the cigarette you have become the experience itself what you have not experienced for yourself will not attract or pull you to it if you had really experienced the joy of helping others you would have offered the seat to the old man for true experience to happen meditation is the way when we meditate our heart which is as hard as a stone will flower and become as soft and sensitive as cotton and we will feel the need to help others at present at present 
we either read in some magazine or we have been told by elders that it is good to give our seat to elderly people in the bus. That's all. Instead, what should happen is that feeling of helping should flower within us and we should offer help. Sensitivity will become a way of life only if meditation has happened in you, else it will remain just skin deep. To push the preaching received through the mind to the heart requires a drilling machine. That is meditation. Then justice, honesty and similar virtues taught to us will become a way of life and there will be a certain juice that you will feel when you follow it. Else, all these virtues will remain as intellectual knowledge without turning into experiential knowledge. When we get into the real subject this afternoon, you will get a more detailed answer as to why you are acting in an unconscious way in spite of knowing what is right. All right, enough for now. We will meet after lunch and get into the subject straight away. Thank you.